The time will come, Diana. And everything will be different. Hi there. Hi, Mark. How it's nice you? to see you both again and to be talking to you about this wonderful, exhilarating new movie. I think fans are really going to enjoy it uh, when they get a chance to see it in a couple of weeks. Um, so first question is to Patty. Patty, when we spoke a few years ago, you did say to me that you wanted to bring Wonder Woman to America for the sequel. So talk a little bit about why you decided to go to 1984. You know, it was, I, my memory of Wonder Woman is so shaped by uh, Linda Carter in, in the TV show. And so there was always something that about the brand of Wonder Woman that felt very right in that era of pop Americana. And so I was dying to bring this Wonder Woman into that same era. And then I think what the opulence and the excess of the 80s allowed us to do with the storyline was just really, really appealing and kind of speaks to our modern world without being preachy and linear, you know, literal. Uh, Gal, for you, what was the best part about going to 1984? Uh, it was just a, a very different experience, uh, you know, the, the feel of it and the way that it looks visually than the first movie. So it felt like a, the right uh, uh, change for the first movie. The first movie we shot in 1918, it, it was grayish and gloomy and First World War. So going to the 80s and having the poppy colors and the culture and the amazing hair, makeup, costume, it just felt, felt like a good, uh, a good transition. There's some great fashion moments in this movie. What was your favorite fashion moment from the 80s? Yeah, my, I mean, I would say the, the mall. Wasn't the mall? <laughs> the two things were the mall and the gala. The gala yeah. was really fun because it got to be like how the rich people live with the huge, shiny, you know, <laughs> puffy shoulders and all of that stuff. And then the mall was just like such a mix of mix of every kind of person you would see and there were there were like people who were still dressing like it was the 60s and the 70s and it was super fun i gotta say the same you know we had so many fashion moments throughout the movie even the montage with steve and you know when we go to the underground and you see those um punk you know rocker. the, the uh, how, how do i call them now i forget punk rock, the punk, punk rocker yeah. <laughs> punk rockers with the crazy hair and then you see there were like there were so many different moments. It was it was nice to witness it as 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 a as a as an actor on set. These movies, the villains are very important, and Cheetah and Maxwell Lord are such great choices uh, for this you. sequel. Uh, speak a little bit about that and why you decided to bring Cheetah in right away. I think Cheetah is you know, is one of the biggest and most fun super, uh, you know, Wonder Woman's villains. And I love the fact that she starts out as one of, in, in certain versions of it, she starts out as Wonder Woman's friend. And so I just thought that that was such an interesting way for the, particularly for the story that we were telling to, to really create a, a villain instead of having a villain who, you know, meanwhile over here, they're doing something evil. It was really fun to have those slow steps where you're understanding just like a friendship, having a fight, what is turning this person into a villain? There are so many cool action scenes in this movie. Uh, what was your favorite to you both? What was your favorite scene to film? Oof, it's hard to choose. They were all so, so complex and Difficult. had their own <laughs> <laughs> moments. It was not a whole lot of, we laughed and laughed and had such a blast making this movie, but it was not easy. <laughs> it was every single one of the scenes I keep feeling was like a 16 sided Rubik's cube. It was like, and stand on one foot and then you have to do this thing. And then the person at the wire and God, I hope that, you know, it was like, it was so complex, all of it, but yet we had so much fun. You know, I think Walking, and, and also, they're all so different. You know, you have the mall sequence, which is Wonder Woman full blown in her full blown element, enjoying the moment in the 80s, in the mall, saving the day and all of that. <laughs> but then you had the, the fight with, with Cheetah that was like literally on the ground, up in the air, in the water. Like <laughs> everything was so, there was a lot of everything, even... Penn Avenue, just the run that I that I did. We shut down Penn Avenue for several days and we had like an extensive 
uh, uh, wire rig that pulled me uh, at the same speed as Usain Bolt. And yet at the same time, I had to hit the ground with my fit with my feet so it looks like as if I'm running everything was very <laughs> very very challenging um, so so it's it's hard to choose just one the golden eagle armor was so cool to see those images last year when they first surfaced uh, gal for you what was it like when you first saw yourself in that costume you know it's one of those moments when you're like wow I can't believe it's me in the costume um, I, I saw the design at the beginning and I was so excited that I was the one to get to wear it because where else does women have the opportunity to wear these extravagant, crazy, extreme, you know, outfits, costumes? Um, but it was a long process. Also, I feel like, honestly, everything with the movie, it feels like super layered and we had to shape up everything in order to perfect it. So. Even with the golden armor, it was such a long process until we, we brought it to a place where it can be, it can look beautiful, but also be practical so we can move in it and do everything that we need to do. But essentially, I feel like it's, it's like when women are pregnant and they have their kids and then they want to have another one, they completely forget about how hard <laughs> the pregnancy was and how hard the delivery was. They just want to have another baby. That's how I feel about the golden armor. It's like, now that I see it, I want to wear it again. Um, but it wasn't the most comfortable costume that I, that I got to wear. That's my problem with filmmaking in general. I keep having, <laughs> I want to, now I want to make another film, but wow. <laughs> that was hard thing to do. Yeah. The movie is exhilarating. It's fun. It's action packed. It's hopeful. It's romantic. It's heartbreaking. Um, what do you hope people take away from Wonder Woman 1984 when they get to see it in a couple weeks? I hope they have a great time watching it. And I hope that it speaks to something deeper as well that, that can, you know, can, can have communion with them. You know, I mean, I think that's the most beautiful thing about filmmaking is communion with the audience. And so we were always really trying to do that in the first place, but now more than ever to have something that is bring something to them that's joyful, but also something deeper uh, that speaks to love is just, would be such a wonderful thing to get to, you know, try to offer. I want them first and most to enjoy the movie um, and have fun with it. And, and, you know, Patty and I had multiple and multi so many conversations about what the movie is about and, even while we were shooting the movie, we went to such a rabbit hole that we're like, are they going to get it? Or are we like, <laughs> is it too complex now? <laughs> is it just us understanding the movie? No, but going back to, you know, the partnership that I have with Patty is that we are very much on the same page and we have the same, uh, we have the same intention we both realized from before we even shot the first Wonder Woman that we have an amazing opportunity to use a huge tentpole with an IP that, ever, that is a household name and to try, try and touch on people's heart, hearts. I think that the, the reason to why I enjoy making movies is because it makes people feel and what I want to bring, and I don't know if I can, if I do it or if I, you know, how, if it works, but my aspiration is to bring love to people's hearts, especially with this movie. Um, I feel like the first one was very much about truth. And this chapter in Diana's, li in Diana's life is, is love. And that's why I think, you know, we couldn't anticipate we couldn't anticipate how much the movie is going to be relevant nowadays when we just started shooting it in 2018. But our intention from the get-go was just, you know, open people to open people, open people's heart, and and to bring some joy and and love. It's it's the simplest things that are very very hard to <laughs> to do.